You know, when I thought I was finally out, they pulled me right back in again. Damn you, Taurus. No, not Taurus. gotta say looks like Taurus has me in her clutches again <laughs> good grief you know uh, I never thought I'd own another Taurus but uh, I'm not anti-Taurus those of you that seen my videos before you all know already that I had one heck of a time with a PT 111 Millennium Pro went through a lot of stuff with it but I gotta be honest that gun and any other Taurus I owned when they were working, I love shooting them more than any other firearm I've ever had. So that's why I decided to uh, give Taurus another try. Now, this here is my very first online purchase. I bought this from Guns Bud Shop online and well, I just said Guns Bud Shop. Bud's Gun Shop. It was $288. The FFL transfer fee was $12. And I paid for it with a postal money order. That's what I liked about Bud's. Uh, a lot of these other online gun places would not do that. And I'm not one of these people that likes to put their personal information online. Ask the last person that ever got hacked. They would say, well, gee, I never thought that would happen to me. It's always the other guy. Well, guess what? They wake up one morning, get a phone call, their bank account's overdrawn. They don't have a cent to their name. Yeah, they've been hacked. Not me. That's why I chose Bud's. Not only because of the price, but because of the uh, payment options they offered, which I used a postal money order. So $288 for the gun, $12 for the FFL transfer fee and background check, and, uh, well, for the stamp that uh, I put on the envelope and mailed the money order off in, I'd say I got $302 in this firearm. Now, let's look at this case right here. This is a good-looking carrying case. It's just as good is any uh, Smith & Wesson M&P carrying case. It's a lot better than the Glock carrying case. And you've even got the little hole already drilled right there to put the padlock in. It's just nice. Just real nice. Now I've got this opened up right here. I've already had the gun out. And I have already done a really deep cleaning on it. These Taurus firearms are packed and filled with Cosmoline grease. It is a shipping lubricant and they put these guns on a cargo ship from Brazil up to the southeastern part of the United States, usually Miami. It keeps the moisture from the salt water air getting in and causing corrosion. And I like that, that they take such good care, you know, uh, during shipping. Now, there's a million PT-809 videos here on YouTube. What's wrong with this picture? Can anybody say anything? Something is missing right here. The bore cleaner. The barrel cleaning brush. Okay. It's supposed to come with one. Everybody that uh, has a PT-809, 840, 845, or any of the 24-7 series or the G2 Millenniums, you get a bore cleaner or cleaning brush. Well, since this part right here hasn't been cut out all the way or removed, I know right then and there that uh, the people at Taurus 
didn't include that. But for the price I got this for, I'm not going to bitch about it because I got plenty of cleaning supplies. All right. What comes with it, you got the uh, back straps or palm swells, I call them. Got a medium and large here. I already have the small sized one on the back of this firearm. Right there it is. It also comes with two 17 round magazines. These are uh, all made of steel. Very good magazines. You got the uh, ammo load assist tool right here. This is much better than what Glock includes with their guns. It works fairly decent, but let me show you this. If I can find it. Oh yeah. Everybody knows what this is. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the Uplula ammo assist loaders. It'll load uh, ammo into 9mm, 40 caliber, 45 ACP firearms, and uh, maybe a few others I haven't thought about. Spend a few extra dollars. Get one of these. Because up little loaders here, this one especially, has spoiled me rotten. To me, it's as good as a speedy loader with a uh, tube-fed rifle. I mean, this is just awesome. I love this. Now, you also get the uh, two little keys here. You got the little keychain thingy there. It comes with that. All right, let's do a safety check of the gun. You see right here, you got both magazines right there. No magazine in the well. And you got the little red uh, thingy there that shows there is not anything in the chamber. Now, let me turn that around. Well, that just flew out of there. It's not in there. Overall, for the price and what I got right here, I can't complain about it. I did a lot of research into this firearm right here. Well, this model firearm. And it seems from like 2009 to 2012 was when the major problems happened. But after 2012, it's been a pretty reliable firearm right here. Uh, the main problem, the trigger spring. People would go out, buy one of these brand new, and they wouldn't even get the first box of shells shot through the thing. The trigger spring would break. Some people, it'd take a little bit longer. Now, I checked on the uh, online forums, uh, YouTube, the gun websites, everywhere that I could imagine, I could think of. Not only here in America, I'm talking Canada, uh, Europe, wherever. And after 2012 until today, this has been a very reliable firearm. The trigger spring problem seems to be corrected, and uh, I'm not going to say it still won't happen, but uh, it sure hasn't been happening here the past couple of years like it did before. Also, uh, another thing that they had a problem with between 2009 and 2012 was brass ejection back in people's faces. There was a lot of that going on, but when the uh, Gen 4 Glock 19s come out, they were having that same problem, but it seems like Glock's pretty well gotten a hold of that situation. Also, after you empty out a magazine, you finish firing out a magazine, the slide holds back on it. Well, the slide was not holding back on this in quite a few instances. So, I would say that was probably magazine related. It wasn't catching the, what it's, the follower or whatever it is. But, uh, those were the three major problems that the model PT-809 was having. And it seems like Taurus has gotten on top of those situations and corrected it. Let's go ahead and do a uh, quick takedown of this. We are empty. Empty. Okay. 
This gun is what you call ambidextrous. Lefties are going to love it as much as righties. What you see on this side, you see it on this side. Uh, take down notch, uh, slide lever catch, and the safety decocker handle, and the magazine release. Now this magazine release is somewhat stiff, but hey, it's a brand new firearm, okay? Uh, so what we do here, here's what I do. I go ahead, I get it like it, pull back a little bit, pull down on them tabs, comes right off. You got the dual recoil spring on here, Take that out. All right, get out of there. There's your barrel. You got the polished feed ramp right there. That's a feature on almost all tar semi autos. Pretty nice stuff right there. And of course, to uh, reassemble, you just go reverse order. Then you. Let's see, let me get these guys lined up here. We're good to go. All right. Just that simple. Let's take a look at the functionality. It's hammer fired. You have a steel hammer. A little bit stiff, but like I said, it's brand new. Of course, that'll lighten up after some use. Uh, the trigger, double action, single action. Of course, that first double action pull Some people are claiming that's a 10 pound trigger pull in double action. I don't believe that. You got this nice and steady pull all the way back. And then you get to that breaking point nice and crisp. The reset is all the way out. Now, let's do a single action pull. You got some uh, play right there. But that seems to be common in these Taurus firearms. And then when you get that back, you hit the breaking point, snap. That's nice. I'd say three to four pounds. I think it's rated somewhere, people saying five to six. I don't have a trigger scale with me, but I've been around firearms long enough to make a really good guess, you know. Uh, and, of course, second strike capability. Say you've got the firearm, you got it loaded, you pull the trigger, you got a dud round, bad primer, what have you. Just let off of it. Pull it the second time. Nine out of ten times, that bad round will go off. And this uh, firearm does not have a magazine disconnect safety. It will fire without the magazine in it. Now let's check out the exterior or outside of the firearm. The magwell right here. It's got some beveling on it. Very easy to get the magazine in and out. Uh, like I said, it's got an ambidextrous uh, magazine release. Comes out pretty good, no problem. I've yet to use that side but a couple of times and I find it's rather stiff. Let's try it again. Use the other side. No problem. Okay, the sights on here. There are three dot Novak type sights. I don't know if they're Novaks or just Novak copies, but they seem to be all right. Yeah, I can live with that. And they are both back and front dovetail mounted. So if uh, you want to replace them with something, should be easy enough to find replacements. Uh, the palm swells back here, like I mentioned before, Comes with three of them, small, medium, large. Uh, I've got the small on here. The uh, grips on the front are grooved. And on the back of the palm swelled checkered. It's got a pretty good feel to it. A little bit rectangular at first. Not squared like, but still feels pretty good. The, uh, let's see, you got a rail right here. Put on a light, laser. Make this gun tactical. Uh, let's see. The trigger. You got a wide trigger. Steel trigger. And it's smooth. 
nice and comfortable. I have no problem with that. The finish on the slide is Tenifer. And if I'm not mistaken, most of your Generation 3 Glocks had the Tenifer finish on the slide. The trigger guard on here, typical Taurus trigger guard, I like it. A lot of people, you know, their opposite hand, what they like to do, they like to put that uh, finger right here. It says it gives them added stability. I say to each their own. Myself, I pretty much use that uh, when it comes to a full-size firearm. I use the old cup and saucer grip. That's what works best for me. It's personal preference. Uh, it's got a nice beaver tail on here to eliminate slide bite. And for those of you who have never suffered from a case of slide bite, that's when that uh, slide comes back after you fire around and you catch that piece of skin right here. Damn, that hurts. I did that with the Ruger P95 and that just sucked. <laughs> uh, you do have a loaded chamber indicator right here. It doesn't stick out too awfully far, but it works. And one thing I do want to note on here, the finger grooves. You see, they're, they don't protrude out too awfully much. Now, Gen 3 Glock and some of these other firearms where the finger grooves protrude out a lot farther, not everybody's fingers are going to line up perfectly with those grooves. And if they stick out too far, it's going to make for some uncomfortable or inaccurate shooting. You're going to have to change your grip stance. These right here protrude out just far enough to be comfortable but not far enough to be uncomfortable. I really like this. Alright, now if you notice here on a slide, you got serrations here in the back and on the front. Makes it really easy to rack that slide back for whatever reason. Myself, I just take it like it. I mean, they're not enough to where they're going to mess your hand up or anything, but there is an serration there. You're going to get a good, sure grip on it. Your hand won't slide off. Also, the uh, little keys or tools here, you got two of them on a keychain. Or maybe one of these goth girls can use them as earrings. I don't know. But uh, most of your tar semi autos, or about all your tar uh, handguns anymore, have the feature where uh, right there you just take it, you put it in. You turn it clockwise all the way until you hear a click, and that locks up the whole uh, trigger and hammer mechanism. The gun is rendered virtually useless. All right, I'm going to bring this video to an end because I got to looking when I watched the replays. It's running too long. But anyhow, uh, usually when I make a video about a new firearm purchase, I also like to include some shooting footage. I'm not going to be able to do that in this one. Now this being Saturday night, the weather's supposed to be good Monday, and by Monday night, I should have the first shots out of this Taurus PT-809 posted on YouTube, and we'll see how it does, okay? Like I said, I'm going to cut it short right now. I babbled on long enough. I'll have new shooting footage put up of this Monday night. This is Mark on the Garage Guy 879 channel. When you go shooting, be safe.